Hi, my name's Chris from Driver Training. In today's video, we're going to discuss the number one reason for failing the driving test in the UK, which is observation at junctions. So if you're on your ADI part two, do you do any of these faults? analyze your driving. If you're on part three, do you look for your students making any of these faults? Do you pick up on them and explain why they're wrong? And if you're learning to drive, well, by avoiding doing these things makes you more likely to pass your driving test first time, or at least next time. The number one reason not making effective observation at junctions actually is broken down into seven different aspects and we're going to cover each one of those aspects in today's video. So the first one is failing to judge the speed of an approaching vehicle. So when you turn left or right from a minor road into a, a main road emerging. You see the vehicle, but you don't judge its speed correctly. So in effect, you pull out, the vehicle coming has to hit the brakes and slow down or swerve to go around you. How do we judge? Well, we need, uh, as if you're doing the ADI part two or part three, we need to give reference points, focal points. How can we judge? Well, as a learner driver, we could think, can I walk across the road and back again before that car gets to me? Because it's not just a matter of pulling out, but it's a case of pulling out and getting to the speed limit before that car gets to you. The second subsection, Entering a roundabout with a vehicle approaching from the right. So again, not really judging the gap on roundabouts. Um, pulling out, making a vehicle slow down or swerve. Not noticing that it's coming round. Um, not being able to judge an effective gap. And the way that we do that is we think of the roundabout as a clock. Let me explain a little more. So why do people tend to ignore cars coming round from the right? Well, the first reason is wrong thinking. They see the car in the right-hand lane and they presume that means the car's going to go all the way round and off the roundabout. But when you say to them, but if that car's come from the opposite direction, and it's going right, third exit, it's going to be in the right-hand lane, it's going to stay close to the roundabout, and then it's going to move across to come off at that third exit. So if you were pulling out, that car would hit you. The second reason is that people don't anticipate lane markings. So if the car has come from the right, but he's going straight ahead, we can see the lane marking says to go straight ahead is right hand lane. So quite rightly, the car is going to be in the right lane, follow it round and then come off at the exit. And again, if you're pulling out, at this point, it's going to hit you. So how then do we judge a safe gap? Well, if we're dealing with a normal size roundabout, because remember for mini roundabouts, uh, nine times out of 10 people go over the top of them or they go the wrong way around them. Lane roundabouts, this won't apply because you're following the lane. But if you're on a normal size roundabout, you can think of that roundabout as a clock, three, six, nine and 12. And if the car coming around it is at or before the three o'clock position, generally, as a rule of thumb, you've got chance to go and pull out quite safely because it's still on the other side of the roundabout. However, if the car coming round 
has gone past that three position, then you need to stop and wait for it to go because by the time you started to pull out, that car would already be on top of you. So it's better to wait and let the car go and then choose a suitable gap to go into. So let's have a look at that in action. You can see the black car coming round the roundabout is already after the three o'clock position. So it's better to slow down, let him go and then go. For the next vehicle, we can see that both of them are still over at the three position. So that's enough room for us to go. Now, if we're looking early, we can see the red car is at that three o'clock position. So we could have kept going at that point because like the taxi, we were going straight ahead. So we had the speed and the time to get across. So the key is looking early and assessing. Again, here, the vehicles coming are at the three o'clock position. It's a big gap, but the white car hesitates. Now the blue car in the distance again is at that three o'clock position. So we could have gone, which is why both cars went before us. Now in this instance, the white car again is over at the three o'clock position. So we could have kept going, but now we're looking. It is clear because the van is being blocked and he's at that three o'clock position. The next subsection is making no effective observations at all. So when you emerge from a junction, you don't even look. And that causes the vehicle approaching from either left or right to do an emergency stop to avoid hitting you or the examiner hits the brakes. So that can be at a closed junction so here's an example of the dual controls being used. You can see it's a closed junction. It's a very closed junction. If that silver car moves forward about half a meter or so, just about three feet, we're going to lose his view completely, which means we can't see round the corner at all as to what is there. Also, if you notice, we're still doing 14 miles an hour at this point because the driver is looking to the right, can see it's clear and there's a gap. So as decided, I'm OK to keep going. But we've got no idea what's around that corner. So the dual controls go on just as that lorry comes past. So at 14 miles an hour, we would have turned that corner and gone on to or gone over the center white line because you can see even at this point, it still hasn't stopped. The car is still at four miles an hour. So we would have gone around that corner, gone over the white line and had a head on impact with that lorry doing 50 or 60 miles an hour. Now, also to consider is because it's a lorry, what if a motorbike was able to go quicker than it and was thinking, right, I'm going to overtake this lorry. It's a long, straight road. And then all of a sudden, we just pull out without looking right, left and right. You've looked, but you can't see anything because you're not at the white line. So you look early and then try pulling out anyway. And that's when either the dual controls go on or the examiner sees the vehicle that's coming has had to hit the brakes and stop. Our fourth subsection. Well, that's making no observation when joining a dual carriageway from the slip road. So you either don't realise that you've joined a dual carriageway that you're on a slip road or you're not looking in the mirrors and checking either until you get to the white line or even once you're crossing the white line perhaps not even at all the fifth subsection to this point is going straight ahead 
at a crossroads. Now, especially if you're doing the ADI part three, one of the things we cover in the training is identifying unmarked crossroads and identifying marked crossroads. And in the video we've done on crossroads training, we even go past signs and sometimes the trainees don't even point them out and they go, I didn't know it was there. This is what happens with learners on their test. It says, approaching a crossroads, you don't recognize that it's a junction and you emerge and cross the crossroads without making any observations to the left or the right. Okay, so as we're coming up to the crossroads, start crossroads. to slow down, start okay. to... Oh. Crossroads. Is it on? Yeah. Okay, so you can see it's crossroads. So yes. we've got... Okay, so... That was near. That was mm. good, wasn't it? <laughs> Scary than I wanted it to be. <laughs> well, it's good though, because this car just brakes by itself. It's really good. Okay, so I had to apply the brake there. Oh, Yeah, because right. you were coming a bit too fast up to the crossroads, probably because I didn't tell you that there's crossroads here. Uh, yeah, um, But we can work on that. Mm -hmm. um, so again, driving through a crossroads without even recognizing that's what it actually is. So if we're doing our EDI part three or practicing our standards check, we need to be honest and think, do you have actual lessons where you focus on identifying marked an unmarked crossroads. If you said to your pupil, do you know what an unmarked crossroads is? Do we ever pass them? How would they respond? Do they know there's five different types of crossroads, including unmarked, controlled by signs and road markings, controlled by traffic lights, controlled by traffic lights and lane markings? controlled by traffic lights and yellow box junctions. Do they know the difference? Do they know how to handle them? Then, do they know how to deal with the different aspects of them, such as going straight ahead when the road is narrower or dealing with an offset crossroads? These are the things we can ask ourselves, am I teaching this to my pupil? Then how do they deal with them in different scenarios? All this will help them to identify crossroads. Point six to this, looking too late. When you emerge from a junction, you look too late for the observations to be effective as you've already turned partly into the next road. So this is when you come down to the junction, you should look right, look left, look right, then decide to go. But what happens is everyone comes up looking to the right, goes, yeah, 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 it's clear I can go. And then they're already turning as they look back. That's an automatic fail. Because if there'd have been a car parked on the corner, if there'd have been a car parked opposite, so any vehicles coming towards you would have been on your side of the road, that's a head-on collision. Minimum observations at junctions are right, left, right again, then decide whether to go or not. The seventh part, repeatedly not looking left when turning left. That means when you go from the main road into a side road, you don't check that left mirror. You might check the centre one, but not the left. And it also means not actually looking left into the road. So if there's any parked vehicles, any possible hazards, you're just looking ahead, turning, it's too late, both for junctions and left turns. So it's mirrors, then signal, then position. But also look, is there a bus or a lorry 
on the corner? Is there someone waiting to cross the road? You need to know all that before you actually turn into that road. We hope this video has been a help to understanding about why not making effective observations at junctions is the number one reason for failing the driving test. If it has, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel for more great video hints and tips. The link for the briefing folder with the pictures is in the description below. Thanks for joining us. Remember, teach well, drive safely and we'll see you all again in our next video.